Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, sometimes we got to take a break from wrestling and talk about something else. Today, I want to talk about one of my favorite anime, Trigun. Specifically, I want to talk about the character of Ash the Stampede, which I think is probably one of the greatest fictional characters ever created. And it's um, it's a shame that Trigun is one of the many old school, older school, not in the 80s, but late 90s anime that um, is kind of forgotten to history. You know, because it was 26 episodes of really good stuff. Um, the manga was pretty much out of print before I even uh, thought about reading it. So I've never read the manga, but this is about, so this is about the anime and it's tremendous. For those of you who don't know what it is, and maybe you have some kind of interest in it, Trigun is a, it's a sort of post-apocalyptic Western anime. Uh, it has a lot of sci-fi in it. It also has some Christian themes. Um, and it's it's a story about a guy named Vashta Stampede who uh, supposedly had destroyed the city of July. And he is a outlaw. He's a wandering outlaw. And two girls named Millie and Merrill are sent by the Bernardelli Insurance Agency to mitigate the disasters that he is uh, causing upon the citizens of the various towns. Now, the an interesting thing about this is it's not set on Earth. It's set on a fictional planet. Because, and this ties into what is called Project Seeds. Uh, Vasha Stampede and his brother, um, Knives, are projects from uh, Project Seeds. They're not exactly humans. They're more like plants. And that's why they have such long lifespans. And Vash and Knives are raised kind of for starters they were raised in a, in a tank first. And then when they are kind of when they kind of come out of it, they're raised by a woman named Rem Severum. And Rem Severum teaches them about life and humanity and nature and all of these things. And there's a scene in the in the in the anime where you can tell I, I love this scene so much. That's why I love this anime so much. Where there's a fly caught in a spider's web. And Vash and Knives are both kids. And they're looking at this. And Rem is explaining to them that the spider is going to eat the fly. And Knives kills the spider. And Vash gets really upset at him. Because he killed something. And Knives looked at him pretty plainly and said, Look, if you didn't kill the spider... It's going to eat the fly. If you wanted to save the fly, you know, kill the spiders. And then Vash said, well, we could have saved them both. And Nive says, no, you can't save them both. If you'd have plucked the fly from the spider's web, the spider would have starved to death. And you see the difference between the two brothers right then and there. And it's a perfect setup for what the story is. Now, I think that's like six episodes into the show. So you have to go through the show a little bit before you finally get that you know, that separation of the of the two of them. And not as himself doesn't really become a main character in the show until like the later half of the series anyway. Um, but you get a, a general idea of what Vash thinks and how his mentality is. And you learn that through Rem, he's, he's, a, he's become a fat pacifist. He doesn't like fighting. He, in fact, will avoid fighting. And this is one of the greatest uh, character moments is his pacifism is so literal. He is so convicted in that fighting is one of the least things that you could do. And killing is off completely off limits. But fighting is something that throughout the series, he will allow himself to be captured. He will allow himself to be tortured. He will allow himself to be shot, shot at. Uh, humiliated he in one scene in the later part of the series he even strips butt naked and barks like a dog in order to try to prevent people from being hurt or harmed but at the same time because vash is a bit of a trickster character everything with him is two sides you know he's he's an incredible gunfighter you know but he doesn't like fighting he's really good at it though you know like he's really good he's like the best at it but for him it is the least he is he pulls his punches more than any other 
shonen character, definitely, and definitely any more than any other superhero, because Vash is not a superhero. Uh, the Western motifs in Trigun is that it's basically lawmen versus outlaws. Um, Vash wanders from town to town, usually unwittingly solving these very localized problems. There's land rights in one issue, water rights in another issue, um, various local problems. Vash is, finds himself embroiled in them. Um, but he's not going around to interfere in the lives of humans. He's basically just walking from town to town. And then when people find out who he is, they're trying to kill him and capture him or whatever. And that's really where a lot of the drama comes from because you are told, especially in episode one, that Vash the Stampede, the human typhoon, the 60 billion double dollar man, you know, which is the bounty that is on his head, which is, you know, the crux of the series is that, you know, there's this bounty on his head. You talk that he's like one of the most horrible people ever. And then you meet him. And he's the most fun loving, silly individual in the world, you know, like he doesn't take himself seriously at all. He doesn't take this bounty seriously at all. He wants to just enjoy life, but the, the bounty on his head won't let him, won't let him, you know, anytime he goes anywhere, he can't introduce himself to anybody. So he has to live on the outskirts of everybody else's life or lie about who, he, who he is and what he is. And, and in certain parts of the series, he does that. He goes by different names in order to, live somewhat normally but everybody knows that this guy is special there's something about him uh there's a lot of sci-fi elements like i said project seats is a story um it's about human beings earth becomes uninhabitable for some reason it's kind of vaguely explained uh and then there's these uh cryogenically frozen human beings and and then you have knives and vash and they're in space and rim is a crew member on the ship who plays sort of as their mother figure. Uh, and the point is that they're going to go colonize other planets. You know, human beings are going to go colonize other planets. And this actually creates um, one of the schisms with knives because knives sees humans as he saw that spider. They go into other planets and destroy the environment. So knives as the main villain of this series sees human beings as bugs. You know, they are destructive they are going to destroy life on this planet and um, make it uninhabitable for his kind, which are sort of the plants. And he's going to wipe out humanity. But he knows that Vash is out there secretly helping, but not really wanting to help as much as he's just letting the humans do whatever they want. And Nas is like, no, <laughs> we, we can't let them do whatever they want. They'll destroy everything, you know, so he's. That's a, that's a really great story. I want to get to that a little bit in a moment. But this story has superhumans in it, like Legato Blue Summers. Um, they have really high technology. They have sky ships and all sorts of other mechanical creatures and stuff like that. It's very, it's very cool. But it's also very down to earth. Um, if you've been paying attention to what I've said so far, you understand that there's a Cain and Abel situation going on with... Um, with Vash and Knives, where they were raised by the same woman, but they took different understandings from her messages. And this comes from the way that they were raised. On the ship, there are members of the of the crew who don't like them because they're not human. So they're mistreated a lot. And Vash is kind of, you know, takes it, and Knives wants revenge. So now you get that separation as well as Knives sees human beings as a problem. He sees almost all human beings as the people who picked on him, on them rather, both of them, when they were on the ship who mistreated them and say that this is what humans really are, this is what humans really do. While Vash kind of sees evil or uh, bad people as individuals who are an aberration when it comes to humans. You know, this isn't, isn't how all humans are. You know, these are just bad people and you can isolate bad people. So that is that's that is really good stuff, which also brings us to another thing, which is nature versus nurture. And that the survival of the fittest mindset of knives that, you know, our kind, meaning the not the not humans, 
are superior to the humans. Therefore, we should be making these decisions. And, you know, we're he's not saying we're godlike, but in a sense, he is because he's deciding who lives and who dies. You know, that is an, an ultimate God position. You decide who lives and who dies. He made the decision to kill the spider to save the fly, you know. So now his decision is going to continue. Human beings are the spiders, while the plants are the flies. The plants and the planet are the flies. Kill the spiders. Kill the humans, you know. So he's kind of making those decisions, while Vash is saying we don't have the right to make that decision. We don't have the right to decide who lives and who dies. We Nobody has the right to take a life of another. It's a, something, I think it's said in like half the episodes at this point. <laughs> if you watch the series, Vash says this. Like, nobody has the right to take the life of another. You know, and he only fights when really kind of pushed to or if it's the only way to stop the threat. So to tell you a little bit more about the series, um, the 50, 60 billion double dollars gets on the head of Vasha Stampede through the city, what's called the, the, the July incident or the Angel Arm incident. Um, so to tell you a little bit about this without spoiling the show too much, um, after they crash land on the barren no name planet. Uh, Knives goes back into an area where he creates these things called angel arms. They're basically guns that operate within their secret biology. Basically guns that only they can use. Only him and Vash can use. And they're going to, in Knives' mind, they're going to use these guns to annihilate humanity. That's his, that's his plan. So he goes, he creates these guns, he leaves Vash alone for a long time. And Vash is... You see that he's a character that is a uh, very codependent in so much that he becomes codependent on Rem for a while. And then he becomes codependent on Knives. But his relationship with Knives becomes strained as Knives becomes more and more nihilistic and becomes more and more vicious. So after Knives creates these guns with the intention of using them to kill humans, uh, the only person who can stop him is Vash. So Vash has to make a decision. Does he turn on the only person he's that he knows and who is his own brother? Or does he allow knives to massacre all of these humans? And you learn very quickly that Vash chooses to turn on knives. And I think this is the first time he shot him. He shot knives three times, I think, in the series. Well, he shot him later. Spoiler, but um, this show came out in 98. So if you ain't seen it by now, I'm sorry, but you should go watch it. But he shoots him the first time to stop him from doing something horrible. And Knives freaks out like, you shot me. And Vash freaks out too. Because he's like, oh, oh no, what did I do? And he takes the guns and he runs. He, he flees. But eventually Knives catches up to him. Um, and you see throughout the series that Vash struggles with his convictions. Like there's a specific scene when they are children and knives and Vash knows that something is wrong with knives. And he picks up this giant stone and knives is asleep. And he figures out I could bash his fucking head in right now and end this problem. But it's, it's not the right thing to do, you know? And that's one of those things that again comes up later in the series. So um, after he shot him, uh, Vash ran away. Um, later in the series, they're adults. They meet in the city called July. And this is the July incident, the angel arm incident. And Vash is searching for surviving members of the crew after the, the ship was crashed. And he finds a guy who knew Rem. Rem is dead at this point. Spoilers. Uh, and he finds him and Knives is there. Knives had already killed the guy. And this is when Vash pulls the gun on Knives again. And he's like, you know, you're going to, you pull a gun on me again. He shoots him. This is when Knives shoots Vash. He loses his arm. This is now he's still got the one arm and the arm transforms into like this weapon of mass destruction. And, uh, Vash turns the weapon towards knives, shoots knives, but destroys the town. At that point, uh, knives is mangled and he goes, he survives though, but he goes to this ship to regenerate. And during this time, he creates what's called the gung ho guns, which is a 
group of basically human slaves that he's created. They have superhuman powers. That's not really explained in the series. I think they're explained in the manga. They're not really explained in the series. Um, but they're, they hate humanity just as much as Knives does because they have issues with humanity, whatever their personal problem might be. And the gung-ho guns, their pers their mission in life is to torment Vash the Stampede. Like, that's their entire mission. Until Knives is completely regenerated, their mission is to ruin the life of Vash the Stampede. And that's really what most of the series is. Is uh, you meet one of the members of the gung-ho guns. They try to kill not, um, they try to kill Vash. Vash escapes using his superior abilities. Usually he's pushed to the limit or he completely embarrasses them. However, that works. Um, cause it's different for different, you know, people. Sometimes he completely embarrasses the gung ho gun. Sometimes he barely escapes, but usually he's much better of a fighter than they are. He's just pushed to the limit. Um, and it becomes really cool because you see how vicious knives is. Like for instance, most of the gung ho guns who fail are murdered by knives, you know, for one reason or another, or he either has them turn on each other and has another gung ho gun kill the, the failure, or he will kill them personally. And you see that, you know, that ruthless nature, that survival of the fittest that was, is within knives, even though he's not an active participant in the series that often his philosophy is there, his power and his authority is there. He doesn't need to physically be there. He doesn't need to physically leave this tank. He's in a tank like, you know, sell from Dragon Ball through most of the series. And it's, it's, it's really good, you know, because it's another one of those dichotomies where Vash is traveling around, you know, knives can't move, you know, so he, he's stuck here. So that's a very, and much like a plant, you know, a plant, like a tree will be stuck in the ground. Knives is stuck in this area where he has to regenerate his body. And once he is completely fully regenerated, he decides to go and get, um, well, to summon Vash to him. And this leads to one of my favorite episodes of any anime that I have ever seen. I, I even wrote it down. Episode 24, Sin. This episode revolves around a gun ho gun, the final gun ho gun, whose name is Legato Blue Summers. Now, Legato has these abilities that are absolutely terrifying because he could control other human beings. Um, and his job, of course, is to torment Vash the Stampede. So you see throughout the series that Legato uses his mental powers to do things like force humans to kill each other and force them to kill themselves. And it is, it's absolutely terrifying. In episode 24, we see the ultimate test of Vash and his convictions when Legato turns an entire town against Meryl and Millie, who are just two normal girls. Now, they're, they have, you know, guns and stuff like that, but they're not really, that's not really their, their part in the series. And the entire town is after them. And he has these people shooting at them. And he's telling Vash, the only way you're going to save them is if you kill me. And for Vash, that is the ultimate sin. He cannot do it. And he's pushed. And it's literally the only way to stop this thing. Because it's, and it's, and it's so, it's giving me chills right now because Legato is not a physical threat. He can't outfight Vash. You know, and as he's talking, he's talking about how worthless he is, you know, like wh whose life is more important, theirs or, you know, my worthless life. We're all going to die eventually anyway. You know, it's this incredible episode that ends with Vash shooting Legato in the head, killing him. And in, at this point, you've gone through 22 episodes, 23 episodes of Vash avoiding killing by every measure imaginable and he finally has to do it and it destroys him mentally he's destroyed it is if you thought you know bane snapping batman's back was a big mission thing or doomsday beating superman to death or something like that that is this level 
of character destruction at this point. And now they slowly rebuild Vash. He goes into a depression. You know, he changes his name, goes live in a town. And he's, you know, completely just mentally destroyed. He can't believe that he did this or that he was forced to do it. And then, of course, I think the episode ends with Knives laughing. He's still in the tank, but he's laughing because he knows that Legato is dead. You know, and he's like, I finally did it. I finally destroyed Vash. I finally got him to kill the spiders. I finally got him to kill the spiders. And Vash is completely mentally broken. And he has to rebuild himself from that. So this is following the hero's journey where he failed. And you see throughout the entire series that Vash's pacifism does not work. It just doesn't work. It does because he can't talk everybody down. Sometimes he can. Sometimes Vash can outsmart his enemies. Sometimes Vash can slip through the cracks. Sometimes he can, you know, shoot them in ways where they will live. And then there is this time where it didn't happen, you know, and when Vash does it, he kind of throws away everything like the, the the bright red coat, which has a meaning to it. His haircut, which has a meaning to it. Everything. He tosses it all away because he figures he can't be that guy anymore. He can't be who Rem taught him to be if he's a killer. And then he has to realize <clears throat> that one mistake or one situation that he's pushed to doesn't change who he is, you know? So he has to learn that. And that's something that he, that goes with him when he goes to confront knives at the end of the series. And, um, I like how polite they were when they kind of come into each other where knives is like, did you have fun with the humans? And last like, yeah, I did, you know, had a, had a good time hanging out with him. And then they get into a gunfight. <laughs> Which is really cool, and and it's a it's a fun series because you learn a lot about you know nature versus nurture, the old Cain and Abel story. You get the Christian themes from Nicholas D. Wolfwood, which is a character I didn't mention a lot in this um, review, but is central to it because he is a good point of view character. Um, Millie and, and Meryl, they're point of view characters too, um, but. Nicholas D. Wolfwood sees Vash as a figure that he can't possibly live up to. You know, he doesn't understand Vash. And he's supposed to be a man of the cloth. Like, that's the great thing about the character of Wolfwood is he's supposed to be like this traveling preacher, this traveling pastor or traveling reverend or something like that. And, um, but he carries a giant cross that's filled with guns. And he's an excellent gunfighter. And he's a sort of no-nonsense kind of guy. And then, of course, you realize later in the series, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil the twist. Like, that's one of my favorite twists. Matter of fact, I've already spoiled episode 24, which is my favorite. But you find out that Nicholas D. Wolfwood is one of the gung-ho guns. You know, you find that out later in the series. That he has been following Vash around, basically waiting for an opportunity to kill him. Now, it's, it's unclear in certain points whether... Nicholas D. Wolfwood was hired to make sure Vash survives or if he's an assassin, you know, because we never really get to that point. You see Wolfwood pull guns on Vash a couple of times, but he never actually, they never actually, you know, get into it. But you can, you can learn that Wolfwood is one of the gung-ho guns and the gung-ho guns are sent to torment Vash to stampede. So you're thinking, okay, maybe he's just biding his time. But at the same time, you understand if you've been watching the series that Wolfwood absolutely adores Vash. You know, he he looks up to him in a certain way because Vash is who he thinks he, who he wants to be. Rather, you know, he wishes he could be that, but he can't. And it, it was tremendous. And then, of course, the death scene for uh, Wolfwood is one of the best in anime history as he's, you know, sitting in front of the cross, which Christianity has come from earth to this unknown planet. And he is basically saying, I finally have something to live for. I don't want to die. 
you know, and he's crying, and it's a really emotional scene. One, it's probably second best scene in the series. Like it's it's tremendous, you know. After Vash shooting Legato, it's probably my second favorite scene in the entire series. Is the death of Nicholas D. Wolfwood, you know, and because it was completely unnecessary, and it to me seems like it was the one time he tried to follow Vash's. Um, he tried to follow in Vash's footsteps and it ended up biting them in the ass. And, you know, hopefully I'm not spoiling it too much for people who haven't seen it. But it's it's definitely a series you should sit down and watch. Because Vash as a character, he doesn't change at, until near the end when, you know, there's not that many characters for him to interact with anymore. But he forces other people to change. He brings out the best in others. Or at least he tries to. He tries to inspire other people. And no matter how mi- how awful these people are, no matter how awful or how many of them there are, he does not change. He does not allow what other people think and believe to affect him. You know, he is a, he is a he is a force much like Goku in Dragon Ball. It's, you know, where Goku doesn't take himself too seriously. Goku doesn't change. He changes you. Goku is so strong in what he believes that you have to be sort of malleable in comparison to who he is. So that's how, you know, we get Piccolo becoming his friend after being his enemy. And Tien, who was at one point his enemy, who is now his friend. And Vegeta. And now in Dragon Ball Super, they're trying to do that kind of with Frieza. And even though they're kind of also going back and forth on it. So you see... That Vasha Stampede throughout the series, he is the the lawman who goes into the chaos and changes everything around. Not through complete all the time using violence. Sometimes it's using philosophy. Sometimes the violence occurs and his ability to keep everybody alive is what changes it. You know, changes everybody's perspectives. Sometimes he will put himself in a position where these perspectives have to come out where things that, you know, people didn't really want to talk about or things that were hidden forever start to come out. You know, secrets are exposed and, and he puts himself in that position to fix those things while at the same time, he's, he's just this jolly character that is incredibly funny. And the anime is great in English. Like it's not one of those animes that are shitty in English. Like you can listen to, you can watch uh, Trigun dubbed, and it's fantastic. The voice acting is great, and the, the 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 jokes work, and it's it's really good. I highly suggest everybody watch Trigun. It's only twenty six episodes. I'm telling you, if you really get into it, you're gonna you're gonna like it. You know, especially if you're you like deep layered storytelling. You would really like Trigun. And to be quite honest, I sat down to do this video with the exception of maybe looking up, trying to remember some of the characters' names and the exact episode Legato dies in. I could do most of this off of memory. You know, and I have have the series on DVD somewhere around here. But um, it's just tremendous. I highly suggest everybody watch it. All right, thank you guys for your time. It's good to talk about something other than wrestling for a while. I'm going to talk to you guys later, man. Peace.